As you know, we are living in a world of humans and machine. Humans have been evolving and learning from their past experience for millions of years. On the other hand, the era of machine and robots have just begun. Now you can consider it in a way that currently we are living in the primitive age of machines while the future of machines is enormous and is beyond our scope of imagination. Now in today's world, these machines or the robots have to be programmed before they start following your instructions. But what if the machines started learning on their own from their experience, work like us, feel like us, do things more accurately than us, might even start a war of their own? Now these things sounds fascinating and a little scary, right? Well, just remember this is just the beginning of the new era. Now let's suppose one day you went for shopping mangoes. The vendor had a cart full of mangoes from where you could hand pick them, weigh them and pay them according to the fixed rate. Now the question arises is how will you choose the best mangoes? You were informed that bright and yellow mangoes are sweeter than pale and the yellow ones. So you make a simple rule, pick only from the bright yellow mangoes. You check the color of the mangoes, pick the bright yellow ones, pay up and return home, right? Now, when you went home and tasted all the mangoes, some of them were not sweet as you thought. You concluded that when it comes to shopping them, you have to look for more than just the colors. After a lot of pondering and tasting different types of mangoes, you concluded that the bigger and bright yellow mangoes are guaranteed to be sweet, while the smaller bright yellow mangoes are sweet only half of the time. The next time at the market, you see that your favorite vendor has gone out of town. Now you decide to buy from a different vendor who supplies mangoes grown from a different part of the country. Now you realize that the rule which you had learned that the big red yellow mangoes are the sweetest is no longer applicable here. You made another observation here that at this particular vendor that soft mangoes are the juiciest. Now let's suppose you go out with your girlfriend and she does not even like mangoes. You know how girlfriends are, right? And she would like you to buy oranges for her. Now all your accumulated knowledge about mangoes is worthless at this point of time. Now you have to learn everything about the correlation between the physical characteristic and the taste of the oranges by the same method of experimentation. But then again, this is not as difficult as you thought. But what if you have to write a code for it? So as humans, you would write a code something like this. If mango is bright yellow and the size is big, that implies the mango is sweet. And if the mango is soft, that implies the mango is juicy. Now, conclusion as a human is that every time you make a new observation from your experiments, you have to modify the list of rules manually. You have to understand the details of all the factors affecting the quality of the mangoes. If the problem gets complicated enough, it might get difficult for you to make accurate rules by hand that covers all the possible types of mangoes. Now, this will take a lot of research and effort and not everyone has this amount of time. So, this is where machine learning comes into picture. Well, machine learning is a concept which allows the machine to learn from examples and experience and that too without being explicitly programmed. So instead of you writing the code, what you do is feed the data to the generic algorithm and the algorithm or the machine builds the logic based on the given data. Now let's have a look at some of the features of machine learning which makes our life much more easier. So what it does is that it uses the data to detect patterns in a data set and adjust the program action accordingly. It focuses on the development of the computer programs that can teach themselves to grow and change when exposed to new data. It enables computer to find hidden insights using iterative algorithm without being explicitly programmed. So now machine learning plays an important role in our day to day life as well. You might not know it, but you are surrounded by a lot of examples of machine learning and a lot of which is something that you cannot live without. For example, the first one is Google Maps. Now Google Maps is probably the app we use whenever you go out and require assistance in the direction and traffic. Now the other day I was traveling to another city and took the expressway and the map suggested despite the heavy traffic you are on the fastest route. Well that was fine for me but how does it know that? Well it's a combination of people currently using the service, the historic data of the route collected over the time and few tricks acquired from other companies. Now everyone using maps is providing their location, the average speed, the route in which they are traveling which in turn helps Google collect massive data about the traffic which makes them predict the upcoming traffic and adjust your route according to it. Now another application is the product recommendation. 
But suppose you check an item on Amazon, but you do not buy it then and there. But the next day you are watching videos on YouTube and suddenly you see an ad for the same item. You switch to Facebook, chatting with your friends, and there also you see the same ad. So how does this happen? Well, this happens because Google tracks your search history and recommends ads based on your search history. This is one of the coolest applications of machine learning. In fact, you won't believe that 35% of Amazon's revenue is generated just only by product recommendation. Well, here is one of the coolest applications of machine learning by far. It is here and people are already using it. And that is the self-driving cars. Now, machine learning plays an important role in the self-driving car and I'm sure you guys might have heard about Tesla, the leader in this business, and their current artificial intelligence is driven by the hardware manufacturer NVIDIA, which is based on a type of machine learning, which is the unsupervised learning algorithm. Now, there are certain steps which any machine learning algorithm has to follow. So the first step is data collection, and this stage involves the collection of all the relevant data from various sources. Now, the second step after collecting all the data is data wrangling, which is the process of cleaning and converting the raw data into a format that allows convenient consumption. Now, after the data has been cleaned and converted into a particular format, the data is analyzed to select and filter the data required to prepare the model. Because not all the data is required for a particular model, you have to select certain features. Now, after selecting the features, the algorithm is trained on the training data set through which the algorithm understands the pattern and the rules which govern the data. After this, the testing data set determines the accuracy of our model, and after this, our model is ready. So the final stage comes is that the speed and the accuracy of the model is acceptable, then that model should be deployed in the real system. And after the model is deployed based upon its performance, the model is updated and improved, and if there's a dip in the performance, the model is retrained. Now, machine learning is broadly classified into three major types, which are the supervised, unsupervised, and the reinforcement learning. The simplest form of machine learning is the supervised learning, and it is the one where you have input variables like x and an output variable y. You use an algorithm to learn the mapping function from the input to the output. So, in simple terms, it implies y equals f of x. Now, the goal is to approximate the mapping function so well that whenever you get some new input data x the machine can easily predict the output variables y for the data now let me rephrase this in simple terms in supervised machine learning algorithm every instance of the training data set consists of input attributes and expected outputs the training data set can take any kind of data as input like values of data sets rows the pixel of an image or even audio frequency histogram now let me tell you why this category of machine learning is termed as supervised learning. Now this is because the process of an algorithm learning from the training data set can be thought of as a teacher teaching his students. The algorithm continuously predicts the result on the basis of the training data and is continuously corrected by the teacher. The learning continues until the algorithm achieves an acceptable level of performance. Now, any speech recognition or any speech automated system on your mobile phone trains your voice and then starts working based on this training data. This is an application of supervised learning. Biometric attendance, you can train the machine with inputs of your biometric identity. It can be your thumb, the, your iris, or your face for the matter of fact. Once the machine is trained, it can validate your future input and can easily identify you. Nowadays, this is being implemented in all the smartphones that we have. But sometimes the given data is unstructured and unlabeled. So it becomes very difficult to classify that data into different categories. So unsupervised learning helps to solve this problem. Now this learning is used to cluster the input data into classes on the basis of the statistical properties. Now the training data is a collection of information without any label here. Now mathematically, unsupervised learning is where you only have the input data, which is the X and no corresponding output variables. Now the goal of the unsupervised learning is to model the underlying structure or the distribution in the data in order to learn more about the data. So we came across an important point here, which is clustering. So what exactly is clustering? So clustering models focus on identifying groups of similar records and labeling the records according to the group to which they belong. Now this is done without the benefit of prior knowledge about the groups and their characteristics. 
In fact, we may not even know exactly how many groups to look for. Now, the models are often referred to as unsupervised learning models since there is no external standard by which to judge the model's classification performance. There are no right or wrong answers to these models. Now, market basket analysis is one of the key techniques used by large retailers to uncover association between items, and it works all on unsupervised learning. It works by looking for a combination of items that occur together frequent in the transaction. Now, to put in another way, it allows retailers to identify the relationships between the item that people buy. For example, people who buy bread also tend to buy butter. Now, the marketing teams at the retail stores should target customers who buy bread and butter and provide an offer to them so that they buy the third item, like an egg. So, if a customer buys bread and butter and sees a discount on or an offer on egg, he will be encouraged to spend more money and buy the eggs. And this is what market basket analysis is all about. Now, reinforcement learning is a part of machine learning where an agent is put in an environment and he learns to behave in this environment by performing certain actions and observing the rewards which it gets from those actions. This reinforcement learning is all about taking appropriate action in order to maximize the reward in a particular situation. In supervised learning, the training data comprises of the input and so the model is trained with the expected output itself. But when it comes to reinforcement learning, there is no expected output. The reinforcement agent decides what action to take in order to perform a given task. In the absence of a training data set, it is bound to learn from its own experience. Now let's understand this reinforcement learning with an analogy. Now consider a scenario wherein a baby is learning how to walk. Now these scenarios can go in two ways. The first is that the baby starts walking and makes it to the candy. Since the candy is the end goal, the baby is happy, it's positive reward. Now coming to the second scenario, the baby starts walking but fails due to some hurdle in between. The baby gets hurt even and does not get to the candy. It's negative, the baby is sad, that implies negative reward. Now just like how we humans learn from our mistakes by trial and error, reinforcement learning is also similar. We have an agent which is here the baby and we have a reward which is the candy. With many hurdles in between, the agent is supposed to find the best possible path to reach the reward. Now, another application of reinforcement learning is also the games. It is used to solve the different games and sometimes achieve superhuman performance. Now, the most famous one must be the AlphaGo and the AlphaGo Zero. It trained from the scratch and the researcher let the new agent AlphaGo Zero play with itself and finally beat the AlphaGo 100 to 0. Now, this was a major breakthrough in the reinforcement learning process and also helped a lot of people in the deep learning process as well and also the data scientists to make new robots and create the artificial bots which are there in the games. So guys, with this we come to an end of the session. I hope you understood the basics of machine learning, what it is, what are the basic types of machine learning, how it is difficult for us to perform all of these scenarios by hand and write an algorithm by ourselves. So guys, if you have any query regarding this session, please feel free to mention it in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!